Good morning. Today is the first day of November in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a beautiful blue sky, cool morning here in Myrtle Beach. Prospects of the day are, are wonderful. I hope it is wherever you are on this All Saints Day. Um, and today, a, a reading from 1 Corinthians in the 10th chapter. I want you to know, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same supernatural food, uh, and all drank the same supernatural drink. For they drank from the supernatural rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. <clears throat> now these things are warnings for us, not to desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to dance. We must not indulge in immorality as some of them did and the 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put the Lord to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as a warning, but they were written down for our instruction, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overcome you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your strength, but with the temptation will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Today a reading from Martin J. Heineken, and it is from a theological autobiography, From Childlike Faith to Childlike Faith, written in Dialogues in the summer of 1994. What shall I say then, now that the possibility of my being called from faith to sight is an, is an imminent as it always was, while the probability of it has increased significantly. I have not given up on the church. What a blasphemous thing to say, really, since the continuance of the church does not depend on whether anyone gives up on it or not. As the confessions say, una sancta ecclesia Per, per, perpetuo mansura sit. There will be and must continue to be one holy church. That is the hidden church that is known to God alone, against which the gates of hell shall not prevail. As for a view of the church as it exists visibly on the earth, I pray for a church that is broad enough so as not to identify itself with one or another of its institutional manifestations, but narrow enough so that it includes only those who have not given up on the scandal of particularity, a church broad enough so as to include all who shoulder the cross of Christ, but not so broad as to include everyone who has a bellyache as also bearing the cross. A church that includes only those who enter through the narrow gate, which is Christ himself, but not so narrow that it allows to squeak through only those who conform to one's own view of the truth and one's own starched rectitude a church that makes no distinction between the most unlearned and the most learned and recognizes no distinctions of gender, race, or color. 
a church which recognizes the necessity of a liturgy and continues in an order of worship, but does not insist on uniformity in rites and ceremonies instituted by mere mortals. A church which recognizes the superabundance of God's grace, but neither does it minimize his wrath. A church which sings God's praises in joy, unspeakable, but always on the deep undertone of sorrow, sorrow for the sin that still stains its purity. The church militant on its pilgrim, pilgrimage to become the church triumphant. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we greet this new day, the day of all saints. And today we are particularly mindful of the saints who have gone before us, of those persons in this world and in our lives that have shown us the way to you. We thank you for the commitment of those like Martin Luther and Melanchthon and so many others who marked the trail of revolution, you might say, to turn people's hearts back to you in your true self and in your reality of love for the sake of humanity. We thank you for the witness of others who have faithfully served within your church and served within this world and have shown us the way of your Christ. We are grateful for those who have been a blessing to us, especially those whom we remember this day, the many who are a part of your church triumphant. as you have so promised to us in the waters of baptism, in our own affirmation of faith in the commitment to Christ our Lord, keep us as well with those who have gone before us. Preserve us for all eternity in your blessed kingdom and give us confidence that as we still walk, we have the opportunity of joining in that great parade of persons we know as the saints. Help us to have saintly qualities, not perfection in our walk of life, but the reality that we are sinners who have been saved. And in thanksgiving for that salvation, we reflect your love to this world. Care for each of us, O Lord. Bless those that seek healing in their lives. We pray continually for those that struggle with health issues, with Becky and Sarah as they mark milestones in their own cancer treatment, a grandson Sam as he continues to explore his health concerns, for persons that are known unto us that we remember before you now. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.